so uh, welcome back um, it's been a little while since the last video I'm sorry I didn't get it up on schedule but a lot of stuff happened and I'm finally able to record this um, I have some little music going on in the background I hope that's not too much of a bother for you guys so um, what I'm going over today is how I used Marvelous Designer to make the jacket for my character Proto um, as you can see, basically, it's just a lot of me putting stuff together. Um, I modeled this sort of jacket, like, overlay, like, blob thing. Because I knew that if I would just use the main, the actual model, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit quite right. Let me just grab you guys an image of what uh, the original looked like. Just the base model. And you'll see why I couldn't just use that. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, it's got really skinny arms. And that wouldn't have gone well at all with uh, what I was trying to do. Got the low poly, high poly here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just basically, I'm just making the hood here. Sorry, the actual window is so small. Um, it's been a lot of time doing that. I tried to kind of get a balance of like puffiness and sort of the wrinkles that I was trying to get there without being so high definition that I couldn't control it anymore. Yeah, that was a fun thing to retopologize as well in the end. Yeah. I'm just coloring it. <laughs> and the way I attached it to the inside of the, uh, the blob sort of mannequin was just with a bunch of pins. Here we go. Me obsessively saving. Freeze that in place because you don't want to have it um, uh, running everything at the same time. So if you have like a bazillion different parts, which is what we're going to end up with today, um, if you're trying to calculate that every single time you you do run the simulation, it's just going to crash and go super slow. Yeah. And so I wasn't really working off of a pattern. I was more or less just trying to. Uh, see what looked good. I've never really done a jacket like this before. It was a concept that I wanted to do for a while. And I started actually doing both sides. You can see I'm kind of like just laying it out and then adjusting one side at a time. But it became apparent pretty early on that I just didn't want to do both sides the whole time. So what I actually ended up doing was just doing the, the left side and uh, kind of just copy pasting that over in, uh, in ZBrush in the end. Yeah, I'm not working with a pattern, just I'll just make a shape and then sew it on and then just cut it as I want and then if it works good, if it doesn't work then I'll just reshape it until it does work. And that was a fun piece there just because it didn't really connect to anything at the time but it was an integral part of my uh, concept as you can see it was in there somewhere and so the jacket itself is pretty puffy as you can see um, so what I what I did is I just laid out the underneath bits first and then yeah you can see I'm still trying to do both sides at the same time getting frustrated with it I'm just laying down the underneath parts and then aha here we go now I started cutting things making some fun seams to guide myself later because the jacket's made out of a bunch of different textures which is what I wanted from the beginning yeah. Some more seams. Let me see if there's any other fun things I can show you guys. Some work in progress stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was able to finish my entry for the Unity contest. Um, I think it turned out really, really well, actually. I got to really know the, uh, the, um, the Cinemachine system really well. And uh, I'm really happy with how it looks. I will put a link in the description if you guys want to go see it. I have some fun pictures from it. <laughs> yeah, here they are with the jacket, all sad.
good close-up of the uh, the jacket. Here we go. You can see it again there. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm just working on the arms. And yeah, I've I've pretty much. Oh, here we go. Now I'm now I'm cutting up a piece to make it into um, the little bits. It took a while to get the uh, sizing just right. And it's nice that you sort of does the highlighted lines on the on the main model as you're as you're doing it. Apparently, there's actually an easier way to do this, and it involves. Um, let me see if I can find the right term for it. It's on my poly count somewhere. Oh, no, that's not it at all. A link to my uh, my progress uh, forum page in Polycount at the end of this as well. Layer clone. That's apparently what it's called. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing another character soon. Um, his name is Jelvis. He is an alien jellyfish spirit. <laughs> As ridiculous as that sounds, and um, he's gonna have a cool like leather jacket. So I'm gonna see if I can use this. This um, I forgot it already. Layer clone <laughs> to uh, to do that faster. Because what I was doing here is just really like cutting it up, copying, pasting, and then sewing it back together. When just adding like a pressure outwards to make it puff like that. Just doing the back of the jacket. I actually love this program so much. It just makes everything easy. And more cutting. And I ended up with so many different uh, different pieces. Yeah, here there's me applying the pressure just right. for a second, or not my microphone, on my webcam, and I'm just going to let you guys watch for a bit, okay? Uh, what just happened there, um, in case you missed that, is I had the the layers wrong. I had the um, the orange pieces set to a higher higher um, or a lower layer number than the blue underneath it. So it tried to like merge through itself, and it just uh, just didn't work out. So I just started again. For the uh, for those pieces there, the uh, the sort of S shape and the pocket, I set them to be hard, so that they would stay in that shape even when the simulation was running, and it wouldn't be dragged down by the by the pressure of what's going on around it.
there was me reloading uh, because I'm actually still not sure exactly what happened there but sometimes yeah see sometimes things just get mixed up and they start going through each other and so to combat that I've started to just freeze things in place and that way they will not simulate and do strange things because I actually wasn't able to stop it from doing what it was doing <laughs> so I just let it do its thing quietly but in freeze mode so yeah. Yeah, as you can see, I finished. Um, I finished uh, the marvelous designer section. Let me just pull up that last image that just wasn't there for very long. Yeah, here we go. So you can see the full pattern as it ended up being, and I brought that all into uh, ZBrush to sort of finesse it and add some things to it. I did lose some of the detail on the transfer. I still need to figure out why that is exactly. Um, I'm still pretty new to this, as you can probably tell, but uh, yeah, I think I think it 
it's looking pretty good and I'm just adding the details back in with a pinch and sort of damn standard brush and the, uh, and the smooth here. And then also just to like hide some of the uglier seams I just put in um, some of the little straps that snap in place and just blatantly redrawing some of the finer details that were lost. But yeah, it was definitely a complicated piece <laughs> and more difficult than the actual character itself. So it was fun to practice and I think it turned out really well. He moves back aside. What do you love most about Samantha? Oh God, she's so many things. I guess that's what I love most about her. You know, she isn't just one thing. She's so much larger than that. zipper. Uh, the zipper I got is an IMM tool, I believe, from some ZBrush site. I'll have to look it up later, honestly. I think it was part of a... No, I have a seams pack, and I also have a zipper pack that I think... Oh no, no, the zipper was actually included with ZBrush, and it was some various seams that I have from, from websites. Um, the zipper was a bit tricky because it wasn't symmetrical. Um, and then I added this big thing on the back. I actually lost the footage of me putting it there, but uh, I just wanted them to have a big sort of logo on the back of their head of some spooky face. I, once again, I couldn't do it symmetrically just because the jacket was a little bit off, which was fun for retopologizing later, but oh well. And this is, these are that seam brush I was talking about. It's just basically a bunch of like tiny tubes in a row that lay themselves out. There's other versions of it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can look it up for you guys. IMM Embroidery ZBrush. It was at, oh, it was at sharecg.com. And I'll put a link for that too. Oh, and it looks like the video is done. And there is the jacket in all of its glory. And um, I guess I will see you guys next time. I'm going to do the retopologization of the jacket and of the body. And have a great day.